Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now this week's video is also a viewer request topic. About a week ago, uh, two viewers, Cleo and Yvonne, asked me if I could talk about the Chinese COVID vaccine. Now, after a lot of searches on the internet, I was finally able to gather enough information to talk about the topic on the COVID vaccines that was produced by one of the Chinese manufacturer or biotech company. So we'll look at what we know so far about this vaccine that has been authorized for emergency use in at least three countries now. And by the way, if you are new to the channel, I'm Dr. Han. I love to produce science review content, update on the latest global health topic. I also like to share learning tips for students. If these are your interest topic, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you have already heard these line couple lines many many times, that means you are already a subscriber, and I thank you very much for coming back again this week for another week of COVID-19 update. Now, without further ado, let's head to the topic of this week. So like I said at the beginning, we'll talk about the Chinese COVID vaccine. There's been a lot of controversial data and results regarding this vaccine, and we'll look at it and what does it mean for the world, okay? Now, again, disclaimer for this video. This video is my summary and interpretations of publicly available scientific information. This video does not serve as any purpose for regarding diagnosis, treatment, and prevention of any diseases. And if I mention any companies in the video, I do not have affiliations with them. So first, let's look at the background. Now, Brazil just authorized okay, the use of two different vaccines a couple of days ago on January 18th. Okay? Now, they are authorized the AstraZeneca, which is a uh, adenoviral vector vaccine. Okay, I have other videos talk about those. You can check it out with the link down below in the description box and as well as on top there. Now, today we'll also focus on talking about the other vaccines Brazil just authorized for use, which is produced by the company called Zinovac, okay, which is a Chinese company. These vaccines also have a name called Coronavac. Okay? Now, this is an inactivated virus vaccine that have a reported efficacy of 54% effective by the uh, Brazil government. Okay? Now, this value is highly variable in different countries. So in today's video, we are going to look at what technology is used in this vaccines and what are the pros what are the cons and as well as what do other countries say about this vaccines and what remain to be answered so first let's look at fact number one what technology is used in this vaccines now this vaccine is considered as the inactivated virus vaccines. It used a chemical called beta propiolactone to inactivate this virus. Now, I have a chemical structure there in the lower figure. I know it doesn't mean anything to most people. Basically, this chemical goes into the virus and binds to the genome and makes it not able to replicate inside the cell. So, and it will therefore also trigger the immune system to uh, react to this inactivated virus particle but because you are injecting something that was foreign okay, to our body. Now, this technology has been used in many past vaccines such as the flu vaccine, polio vaccines, and hepatitis A vaccines. So what are the advantage or what are the pros okay the pros about this type of a vaccine is that it is a known technology with a lot of past successes okay it also appears to be safe based on some of the early data published by the company now the storage for this vaccines it's pretty standard refrigeration between 2 to 8 degrees celsius it's a lot easier to transport and store in countries with lower resources okay now short term um, it, this vaccine will provide a very fast and wide distribution to many countries, which is a big plus. Okay, now what about 
the cons of this vaccines. The cons of this vaccines really relied on the lack of published data. Only phase one and phase two data were published in the Lancet article, the infectious disease. Also, the chemical that the company used to inactivate the virus, even though it goes to the genome of the virus, nevertheless, is touching the outer surface of this virus. Now, in previous versions, when they first trying to make this inactivated virus, they destroyed a lot of spike protein, but they revised the production process and then able to produce viruses with a little bit more intact spike protein, which is considered as the very important antigen for the immune systems to recognize. Now, in their phase one and two report, they said that the highest level of uh, vaccine-induced antibodies was still lower than the recovered patients. So that is something to be thinking of. Okay, but unfortunately, there were not much data after the phase one and phase two being released by the company. The president of Brazil actually uh, he had the COVID-19 a couple months back and he recovered and he did mention he would not take the vaccine. So that is something to think about. Also, there is no report on T cell immunity. T cell again is an immune cells that is specialized to kill infected host cells. This information was not measured by the company in the phase one and two studies. So that is a big disadvantage of what we want to know about this vaccine. So. What about other countries other than Brazil? What are they doing? What do they say? Okay, here we have a table. Here first, let's look at the efficacy report. Wow, there's so much variable. Look at Brazil saying 54%, Indonesia saying this is 65%, and Turkey said this is 91% effective. And look at the sample size of their trials. Also varies a lot. Uh, the Turkey and the Indonesia they have relatively small sample size for a phase three study actually. Now look. Looking at the effectiveness, okay. Looking at the infected people in the placebo group and also in the vaccines group, the vaccine group have less people being infected. Okay, that's it's some type of an expected result. Now, in terms of usage, all three countries have issued emergency use authorizations for this vaccine, this coronavac vaccine. So they are available now in those three countries, and there are other countries have ordered this vaccines. So. What remain to be answered about this vaccine? There are so much unknown. In fact, now we really cannot compare coronavac to other vaccines at this point because we really do not have published complete data. Okay, we're based on what the government said in those respective countries. Now, this vaccine also uses killed or inactivated coronavirus. Now, I wonder what type of a string of this virus were used in the productions since its first. Discovery. There have been many mutations being reported in this virus, and some are involved in changing the amino acid sequence in the spike protein. So, how well will this vaccine work against mutated strains of the virus is still questionable. Okay, something that is not as easily to think about at this point. Also, it says it's very effective in preventing severe or moderate cases of COVID, but not as effective in preventing mild cases. Now, mild COVID infections can still have a long-term implications. Something that we need to think about, and we need an answer for it in the later published data. Also, there's unknown side effect profiles. Okay, they consider safe, but We don't know too much still. How about the antibody level in phase three? Did they measure that? How is it compared to recovered people? Also, how about T cell immunity? Now, T cell immunity is very, very important in terms of long-term immunity against this COVID disease. So we do not know. I hope these will be released in their phase three study eventually. So what are the take-home message here? Now, the Sinovac COVID vaccine, termed CoronaVac, is an inactivated virus vaccine. Phase one and two studies were published. They only look at antibodies, but they did not look at T cell immunity. Now, they do have an advantage in distribution and storage. However, lack of published data for phase three, it's really questioning. You know, really bringing a lot of 
adopted in the public. And so far, everything that we know is only based on official announcement or press releases from different governments. And also, the true efficacy currently is unknown. Antibody level is unknown, and T cell immunity does it induce? We do not know at this point. So to learn more, basically in this video, I use a lot of news report, and because there is the only credible sources I could look at for this vaccine. Also, I look at the published data for phase one and two. You can go to thelancet.com and assess that article. So I hope this video is able to provide you a good summary of what we know so far about this Chinese coronavac vaccine. So that is all for me this week on COVID-19 update, and I'll see you again next Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And in between the time, please stay safe and healthy. Bye.